Hey there, everybody. It's Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved. This is uh, where I take a uh, high school or college freshman uh, physics problem provided to me by one of my tutoring clients, and I work it out for them. I make a nice video, I send it to them, and I'm sending it out to all of you, too. So if you go to my channel, you'll find lots of uh, physics uh, problems worked out with lots of explanations all the way to the answer. Uh, so, hey, if you find this sort of thing uh, useful, um, please uh, give the video a like so more people can see it and maybe subscribe to my channel, especially if you're a physics student. Uh, I post about three or four uh, of these videos a week. Uh, and in the comments, if you actually uh, have a, a problem that you would like to see solved, uh, type it up in the comments. And if I have time, I'll, I'll make a video out of it and, and send it to you. Anyway, so uh, here we go. Um, what is the problem today? Well, we have a 260 kilogram glider is being pulled by a 1,890 kilogram jet along a horizontal runway with an acceleration of 2.2 meters per second squared to the right as shown below. How much thrust must be provided by the jet engine and how much tension force is in the cable connecting the jet and the glider? Okay, now this illustration is a little bit ridiculous. I don't think, I think, uh, I bet a 747 uh, has a lot more mass than 1,890 kilograms, and I doubt if you would use it to pull a glider. But, you know, this is the illustration that came with the problem. Kind of funny. Uh, now, here's what we're going to, the concepts we're going to be using to solve this problem. Um, we're going to be using free body diagrams, so make sure you're familiar with that. And we're going to use Newton's second law with those free body diagrams. Um, and uh, if so, if you're not, if you've never, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about free body diagrams, you might not be ready for this uh, video. You might want to get some instruction on that. But if you have, uh, let's get started. Now, I recommend you pause the video now, try to work it yourself. If you get stuck, start the video, and then as you get unstuck, uh, pause the video and, and just try to do it yourself. Um, That'll, that works really, really well. And by the way, um, uh, go to the um, if you go to the um, description of this video, I have links to where you can get in touch with me if you would like a, a private physics tutor. And uh, I also have a Google Doc where I list all of these physics problem solved videos, uh, and they're kind of organized. And there's a link to that Google Doc. So, um, so be sure to check that out. Okay, let's get started. Um, I always use, I use given, find, and solve. What's given here? Now, I'm going to pretend like this was in a textbook, and then down here is what I'm actually writing in my notebook or something. So um, I like to redraw. I always redraw the problem. Now, the drawing's already here, but, you know, so if this was like a workbook or an exam, you know, then you can so let me draw the glider. Here's the glider, and here's the wheels, and here's the cable, and here's my... 747. <laughs> Talk about overkill. All right. Well, it's not a very good 747. It doesn't matter, though. So here's the jet engine. And here's the, the wheels uh, for it. Okay. And so we're going to fire this engine. And it's going to uh, let us tow this, this um, glider into the, into the air. Now, this was given the mass of the plane, I'll call it M sub P for the mass of the plane, is 1,890 kilograms. And the mass of the glider, see how I use that subscript there? That's all I'm doing. Mass of the glider is 260 kilograms. And we are accelerating. The jet engine here is causing an acceleration, and that acceleration is given to be 2.20 meters per second squared. Okay, now what are we trying to find? I'll put that right here. Well, I mean, what, are, what is it asking for part A? Um, well, we want to know how much, the, what is the force of thrust, and I'll call F sub TH for the force of thrust. How much thrust do these engines need to put out? to accelerate this mass. And then for part B, we want what is the force of tension? How much tension force is in the cable? So we want the tension force on the cable. And 
So let's get started. Okay. And solve. Now I really like this format of given, find, and solve. Um, if you you know if you look at my other problems, I, I use this all the time. And this is what I taught to my students when I was teaching full time. This is what was taught to me when I was a student at, at Cal Poly back in the early '80s. So I you know if it's good enough for Cal Poly, it's good enough for you. And it really helps if if you draw a picture of the problem and write what's given around it. You're going to visualize the problem. You're going to really understand it better. So now I'm here's my my problem solving strategy. I'm trying to find forces given acceleration and masses. So I'm already thinking free body diagrams. Okay. Now I've got two objects here, but this thrusting force has to accelerate all this mass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one free body diagram. And sometimes we make the objects dots. And I'm going to do that here. Here's the dot for the um, glider. And I'm going to connect it to a dot, bigger dot, uh, that represents the, uh, the jet or the airplane. It's kind of a weird free body diagram. Um, but now I'm going to draw the forces that are acting on it. Well, OK, just to be complete, of course, Gravity is pulling this guy down, but we have a normal force between the, the wheels and the pavement that's pushing up on it. And these, these forces are not really important to this problem. There's no friction in this problem. We don't need to find the normal force to find friction. And, you know, we're just assuming there's no resi air resistance or anything like that. So, but we do have a, 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 a you know, here's my engine. And my engine is pushing my um, my airplane forward with that thrusting force. So I'm just going to draw it here. And this is my thrust. Now, this is one object. This is like one free body diagram. I think this is looking like a character from a car, what, Big Hero 6 or something. But anyway, this is one object. Yeah, it's tied together. Now you might say, well, what about the tension in the rope? Yeah, sure, but if, if I include both objects, now listen to me right now. If you have two objects that are connected by a cable and they're moving together, like in a pulley system or something like that, you can make it one object by just, you know, defining it to be one object. And you say, well, what about the tension force? Well, yeah, the tension force is pulling the glider this way, but it's pulling the the air the uh, airplane or the jet back with an equal and opposite force. So in other words, the tension for by making this one free body diagram, one object, the tension force uh, uh, in here becomes internal to my free body diagram, and internal forces don't cause systems. To accelerate. Only external forces do. So if I define this to be my system, you know, well, I've got forces up and down, but these, these guys are canceling each other out, obviously. So this right here is the only force that isn't uh, canceled out. And, and this tension force, um, which we're going to find in part B, but uh, we don't need, we don't need it. Uh, it's internal to the free body diagram, so it basically cancels out. So I'm going to define this to be my positive x direction. Here's my y direction, which I don't really need for this problem. But I always draw a free body diagram, show the forces, identify my x and y direction. And then if there are any forces <coughs> excuse me, that need to be broken up into x and y components, I do that. But this is a fairly simple problem because these forces are already aligned with the x and y axis system. So now I'm going to use Newton's second law, where I sum the forces in the x direction, and that's going to be equal to ma in the x direction. Now when you add all the forces together, what you get is the net force. So, so really I could say this, hey look, the net force in the x direction is equal to the sum of all the forces in the x direction. And that will be equal to the, to the mass being accelerated that's in my free body times the acceleration. So this tells me what to do. So I'm gonna add up all the forces in the x direction. Well, I look at, well, there's only one. 
So that's going to be the thrusting force. So that turns out to be my net force. And that's going to be equal to MA. Now we know what A is, right? That's given to be 2.2 meters per second squared. But what's the mass? Well, it's the mass of everything that's accelerating that's in my free body. And that includes both the mass of the airplane and the mass of the glider. And this is the mistake students make a lot in problems like this, is that, you know, you have to remember that this is not just any mass. This is the total mass of the free body diagram. This is the mass of the free body, of the what's in there. And, and so I've included the glider. So this, and the airplane. So this is the mass of the glider plus the mass of the plane times the acceleration. And now I'm ready to solve the problem. Uh, we, said, we have the mass of the glider is 260 kilograms plus the mass of the plane, which was given to be 1,890 kilograms, times the acceleration, which was given to be 2.20 meters per second squared. Do the arithmetic, and we get an answer. And when I did that, I got 4,730 newtons. 30 newtons. Or you could write it as 4.73 kilonewtons. This is the exam I got this from, or the practice exam that I got this from, from one of my clients, my tutoring clients. They wanted it in kilonewtons. So it would be 4.73 kilo thousand. Because 4,000, well, this is 4,000 newtons. Kilo means thousand, right? And so, but I'm just going to leave it like this. So that's going to be my answer right there. And now we're done with part A. Now let's do part B. Now we want to know how much tension force is on the cable. Now there's a couple of different ways you could approach this, but I want to find the easiest way. And so I, I look like what objects are, uh, on what objects can you consider the tension force in the cable to be an outside force, an external, not an internal force? Well, you have a choice. You could draw a free body diagram of the jet, or you could draw a free body diagram of the glider. Now the jet, if you drew a free body diagram of the jet to solve for the force of tension here, you could do that. Of course, it's gonna depend on this answer being correct. Um, so I may or may not, I probably wouldn't wanna use that. And besides, it's much easier because if you look at this glider, really the only force, um, external force acting on it that's causing the acceleration is that tension force. So here I'm going to draw the glider as a dot. And I'm going to say, what are the forces, external forces acting on this glider? Well, of course, I've got its weight, mg. And there's a normal force between it and the ground. And these two are... Um, you know, it's not accelerating in the vertical direction. Um, so these two are just really not going to be part of the problem. But this is, and, and if you think about it, what is that? Oh, that's the tension force. And so, and if I make this X and Y again, just, just to be thorough, and now I'm going to sum the forces in the X direction equals MA in the X direction. Now, Watch this. I'm going to, this is, think of this as an instruction manual. This, this little step, it says, hey, you, <laughs> trying to work a physics problem. Add up all the forces in the X direction for your, on your free body diagram, and that will be equal to the mass of your free body diagram times its acceleration. Well, I look in the X direction, there's only one force. That's the tension force equals now the mass. What is the mass of? The mass of my free body, which is in this case just the glider. So that's going to be the mass of the glider times the acceleration. And now I can plug my values in. The mass of the glider was given to be 260 kilograms. 
and the acceleration was given to be 2.20 meters per second squared. And of course, a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So my units are good. So that tension force will be equal to, when I do the arithmetic, 572 newtons. And there's my answer. Now, some things to, you know, to really think about is, is how to use Newton's second law with a free body diagram. Always keep in mind, what is the free body diagram? How much, what is, I mean, you know, how much mass is in that free body diagram? And you can, you can take a complicated object like this. Here we have two objects linked by a cable. You could treat it as one object or this object or this object. Now I'm gonna leave this to you because I don't want this video to get too long. But <coughs> what if I were to do part B by drawing a free body diagram of the 747? Oh heck, I'll just go ahead and do that. Here's the dot, right? Okay, okay, yeah, 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 mg, and there's your normal force. But then I go, what forces are acting? Oh, well, I've got this thrusting force like this, and I've got this tension force from the cable. Remember the cable, the cable pulls the glider this way, right? But it's going to hold the, the, the air, try to hold the airplane back like this. That's how cables work. And so now if you sum the forces in the x direction equals ma in the x, you'll get, oh, the thrusting force minus the tension force equals ma. Now you know what a is, it's the same acceleration. But what is this m? Well, what's my free body? It's the airplane. It's, you're gonna use the 1,890 kilograms here. Now we know what the thrusting force was. It was 4,730 down here, right? And then, uh, and, and, and or, I'm sorry, this one, the, the thrusting force is 4,730. And then, my, so now you can solve for this. And I'll leave that to you and do it. And you'll find that this thrusting force, the magnitude of it is gonna be 572 Newtons. It really, it really works, okay? So I'll leave that to you. Hey, if you found this helpful, again, please give my video a like. Uh, and um, from what I'm told, that really helps other people find uh, this. And, um, and uh, if you're a physics student, please subscribe to my channel and uh, you'll get notified uh, of more videos. Uh, um, and again, once again, in the comment section, uh, um, go ahead and leave me a problem if you'd like me to solve one of your homework problems. And also in the comments, you can there's a link that can uh, allow you to get in touch with me and I could be your tutor. All right. Well, that's it until next time. So until then, may the net force be with you.